Hi everyone, uh, my name is Charles. So when you, uh, when you start uh, drinking water every day, have you think about this question? Is the water we drink really safe? The answer is, it might not be as safe or clean as you want it to be. Because there are a lot of hazardous components that exist in very trace level in our environment water. One of the hazardous components is PFAS. The full name of PFAS is per and polyfluoroalkyl alcohol substance. This compound has been widely exist in groundwater or surface water of our planet. This is a representative PFAS compound called PFOA. In here we can see one characteristic of PFAS is it contains a lot of flowing elements. Because of this characteristic, PFAS has a high stability. And also because of this characteristic, PFAS can potentially cause some negative health effects, such as cancer or immunodeficiency. Where this compound comes from? Since Free and Company invented in the 1960s, this type of substance has been used in many areas, including Nooksty cookwares, textiles, carpets, or firefighting fronts, all because of the high stability. Even though PFAS has been phased out for protection for many years, there are still a lot of remaining environments, especially in water. To prevent the ingestion, when we are using a domestic water, we would better use a filter to remove PFAS. The filter is by using some solvents to extract PFAS. These are the four common type solvents, activity carbons, polymers, biomaterials, or minerals. In my research, I focus on polymer development. I start with a polymer called Sepra Wax. This polymer is a very popular solvent used for PFAS extraction currently because of the high extraction efficacy. And I apply a chemical reaction by reacting this polymer with two special chemicals, KLF800 and PEI. These two chemicals have the ability to give a high hydrophobicity for the final product. And this reaction was taking place in a rotary evaporator. After the chemical modification, we can see the final product on the right side has a considerable color change compared with the final product on the left side. This means the reaction is successful. To test the PFAS absorption capacity of my synthesized polymer, I use an equipment called HPLC, High Performance Liquid Chromatography. Here is how it works. At first, I will pack my synthesized polymer into a solvent column that was assembled in the HPLC system. And I will purge PFAS to the solvent column by a pump. I use PFOA as the representative of PFAS compounds. At the first beginning, all PFOA should be retained in the column, so nothing will go to the detector. That's why in computer, at the beginning, we will see an initial plateau. But Gradually, when the solvent column becomes saturated by PFOA, more PFOA comes out on the column, and this time, we will see the signal increase. And this S-shaped plot can be used to compare different solvent ability. The longer the initial plateau means a better solvent for PFAS removal. For my data, we can see, compare with these two very popular use solvent, activity carbon and separate wax. My synthesized po polymer, separate wax KLFPEI, has a much longer initial plateau, which indicates my synthesized polymer can be used as a very competitive solvent for PFAS removal. And this work has been published in Journal of Hazardous Material earlier of this year. In spite of this, my synthesized filter might not be the best filter for PFAS removal. Currently in our world, there are still so many people are working on to develop a better filter. So we believe someday PFAS will no longer be an issue in our lives. Because we all want to be sure the water we drink that is safe and clean, 
In here, I wish everyone, if possible, drink the commercial water that was purchased from supermarket or grocery store, or at least try to assemble a filter on your water tap, because this can help us keep away from PFAS. Thank you.